Well, Kurt, your expectations were shattered a little bit today, and uh, you were nervous about this flight out of all the planes we reviewed today, and it turned yeah. out to be one of the best flying planes yeah, in the bunch. Yeah, it was really, really fantastic. It's, you know, when you get the hold of these small 90 mile an hour ducted fans, yeah. a lot of times they're a, they can be a handful on landing primarily, but in the air they get so small so quick. Yeah. You're yeah. just, it's just one of those flights you're, oh, you're really on it, yeah. and your, your run times are traditionally shorter, so your first flight's your trim out flight. It's just pretty much get it up, trim it out, and then land it, and it's like, you get done, and you're like, that wasn't fun. That was just, yeah. you know, yeah. that was just getting all the kinks worked out. Yeah. And then the second flight, you, you really see what it's like. Um, I had too much enjoyment on the first flight. Yeah, so exactly. I, yeah. I almost ran too far on I the was, battery. But. You know, same goes on my end with the filming, too. I yep. mean, I know what these are like to film. and, and Not fun. Yeah. Let's jump into the review, and let's talk all right. about it. Let's see. Uh, model characteristics. Build is advertised, 4.5 out of 5. Yeah, overall, it was pretty much uh, dead on. with the, There are a lot of instructions. Make sure you pay attention to the hyperflow uh, ducted fan units directions separate from the, it's the assembly or the, uh, it's the uh, build instructions. You're going to want to go through the break-in procedure and also the bouncing procedure to make sure it's smooth as, as can be. Now, one thing that they tell you you can do is uh, as you rotate the fan uh, around the motor, you've got, I think, a six-sided uh, hex you know, uh, shaft adapter. You can continue to rotate that around. That's really the best way to find your smoothest balance point on that, that ducted fan. When you get on the bench, go through and do that. Before you even get into the assembly, just like they say, you're putting the whole ducted fan together. Run a hyperflow hyper unit up to that, the, they take you a quarter throttle, half throttle, and three quarter, or yeah, and then up the full throttle. They have you go through the procedure, but keep rotating that, that um, the fan unit actually around, or the blades around on there, and try it in each of those six positions, and you'll find that one of them runs the smoothest. Before you say, oh, this thing's vibrating like crazy, you send it back, just keep rotating it around and trying it, and you'll find one that runs real smooth. I found my last one, and you know you went too far because the next one is back to some vibration. Yeah. It should run very, very smooth in your hands. It shouldn't be that vibration that makes your hands tickle. It should be nice and smooth. You may find that throughout the RPM range, there's one RPM that has a little bit of vibration, but at full throttle, it should always smooth out. So just pay close attention to the directions and try that method to get your fan to run as smooth as, as possible. And the rest is some epoxy work, some trimming, and things like that. So it's yeah. more of a builder's model. Yeah. It really is. Fitting yeah. the, the, the ducted fan in the back is not uh, slip it in and a couple screws and yeah. you're done. It's, yeah. it's, it's some modeling. So. you got to do some tuning on it. Yep. Yeah. But otherwise, everything fit. All right. Finish 4.5 out of 5. Speaks for itself. Yes, Absolutely it gorgeous. Fiberglass, painted fiberglass. It's flawless. The stickers look absolutely incredible it just yeah. it really makes a nice finished model power 4.5 out of 5 yeah the ducted fan unit um the way it's set up is it's it's really pretty much maximum thrust out of this particular um a hyperflow unit we're using the fastest motor that it's spec for yeah. we're using the the um 90 uh, out uh, the output of the of the um exhaust duct so we're getting the right amount of compression uh, in the most and the maximum thrust out of the unit so it did well. It, it wouldn't do unlimited climb outs by any means, but yeah. you could get up there and, and push, on, push on through verticals and do some aileron rolls, three or four full rolls yeah. before you, know, you started nosing sure. over. But it was good. Ground handling, we gave it a five out of five. Yeah, this is the thing that, what usually steers people away is they're a handful to take off, they're a handful in the air because they disappear so quick, and then the landing is always yeah. just like a rocket. I could not believe how well this thing slowed down, and you saw it immediately on film yep. too. It slowed down and behaved so well, dead sticking it in, which is what they recommend. Cut the power on the downwind leg, make your turd come in and, and dead stick it in on the ground. Yeah. It was a beautiful glider, yeah. fantastic, yeah. and you had you had tail control all the way. It to was the stop. rock solid. Just yep. watching it, it was it was smooth as silk. It looked like it was on rails coming in, and there was none of that. You always get that ground effect that your balloon or exactly. bounce. Exactly. It was just straight into the grass. It settled smooth. into the ground effect and just stayed there, and and I kept giving it more and more and more elevator, and it just finally stopped. Yep. So, Drop I mean, that's, you couldn't ask for more on the yeah, ground handling. That was nice. Uh, durability, four out of five. It's balsa build-up wings, a fiberglass fuselage. Yeah. It's going to be pretty tough when it comes to, like, hangar rash and stuff. Um, yeah. But if you, and it's going so fast. If you if you take it in on concrete, it's going to blow to smithereens. You take this thing into, into grass. In the grass, it's going to blow to, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're going to yeah. tear the wings to shreds. So, uh, the anhedral uh, horizontal stabilizers are, you know, they're going to pop pretty sure. easy on you. So. Okay, pilot experience. Flight is advertised, five out of five. Yep, you it was were beautiful. Pleasantly surprised. My, it exceeded my expectations yeah. on flight characteristics yeah. by far. This is, and I've flown a couple of their, you know, ninety mile an hour ducted fan units, and well, one was a prop, and it was a ducted fan, and this definitely went above and beyond. Yeah. It, it was. Don't be afraid if you're if you're that advanced pilot and you want to get something like this, 
and you've got the eagle eyes, you're fine with the, the distance and the orientation and, and losing the profile, um, and you're just worried about the handling, this, you're going to laugh at yourself. You didn't, I didn't really hear you comment on that much, though. You didn't seem to lose the profile on this Not too bad. I had, yeah. it, um, I had it about 20 degrees into the sun. It would, it, I, it would disappear on me. Yeah. But it, it cuts such a predictable line. Exactly. You fly by the sticks at that point. Just hold it in its orientation. When you see it go into that area, I just hold yeah. and wait, and it comes out of it. You, know, it's, yeah. you always get your profile back. But uh, it was really a fantastic flight experience. Yeah. Good. Flight time, four out of five. Uh, yeah, surprisingly. Uh, it's 35 amp peak on the ESC, and uh, we were running with a 2200 milliamp 4S, 14.8 yeah. volt pack. And y you expect about four minutes. We actually had about five, five and a half minutes if you weren't getting too crazy in the throttle. Yeah. And it, was, it flies well at half throttle, which sure. was, I was surprised. It does fly comfortably at half throttle. So by all means, you've got cruise uh, power yeah. that you can actually push an entire flight out of cruise once you get out in the air. Once you punch it on takeoff, I bet you could squeeze eight minutes in this thing, which yeah. is just to me unheard of at a, a model this well, size. Well, the fact that this thing will slow down and fly so good, exactly. slow is why. Yeah, most yep. of your ducted fans they just can't do it no. because they've got to have that airflow. They start sagging, their tail yeah. end starts sagging, and your yeah. turns are all mushy and slow. So yeah, uh, yeah. you could definitely get some great flight time out of this. Uh, field size, large field, yeah, large this, flying it field. moves out. You're looking yeah. at 90 mile an hour plus. It's, yeah. You need a large flying field. Once and this again, is a classic liability risk. Take not it a to park a flyer. Nope. Take it to a, yeah. a, a, a insurance based or yeah. licensed flying field. Just or, use common sense. Yeah, or private property or something. Yeah. Don't don't get it, don't get the whole industry in trouble because you want to fly your F-16 at yeah. the local park. Yeah. <laughs> Portability, 4.5 out of 5. Um, yeah, it's pretty compact and small. Yeah. It comes with this display stand, this handy assembly and display stand. Yes. Um, which I, that was wood. I had to put that together, Rob. Actually, I had to what? build that. Yeah, I no, had to assemble that. they sent that in a separate box. Nope, nope. I built it. Yeah. Believe okay. it or not, I can use CA in a wood <laughs> just for a stand. And look at it, it's kind of torqued out a little bit. So <laughs> I wouldn't fly it. I'll put yeah. it that way. Okay. Uh, skill level advanced. Yeah, this is definitely advanced plane from the profile perspective, which we talked about. Yeah. And uh, even though this was highly visible, really your best time to fly. Usually for something like this, I've had the best luck flying when, you know, at it, 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 uh, high noon. When yeah. the, the sun's yeah. as high up in the sky as possible, and you're working below the sun. Yeah. You've got as much room. Uh, you do much better keeping it down closer in your eyesight. As soon as you get it up and out, it starts, uh, you get confused pretty easy. But um, you're going to want to have that, that comfortable, I've lost it, but I'm not going to panic, and I'm going to yeah. find it again. Yeah. I'm going to understand its orientation. Yeah. And that's an advanced skill. Yeah. And then the speed, advanced, yep. and the uh, uh, the landing, though, was really an intermediate-type landing. Yeah, it was more yeah an actually, landing. the landing was very and docile. And the, the flight surprised. feeling, the characteristics and handling was more intermediate. Yeah. Um, it's just pretty much for the for the more the higher speed. The maneuvers. fact that you're you're going to have to have good awareness on uh, yep. your orientation and stuff is what exactly. I think would make it you know more for the advanced pilot. I agree. Yep. Well, that wraps up our review of the F-16. You can go to the website at 2 and take a look at the full review there. If you have any questions, on the lower left corner of every screen on the website, there's the Ask 2 icon. Click on that. It'll send us a message. And uh, a couple of business days, we'll get back to you to try to get your answers taken care of. I'm Kurt. And I'm Rob. Thanks for watching.